Russia has been in the world's eye for many centuries. Even recently, they've become the major center of attention after the country's leader, Vladimir Putin, invaded Ukraine. However, this is only a fragment of the events surrounding Russia's existence since the days of the USSR. After the Soviet Union was dissolved in 1991, Russia became the largest country in the world, stretching over two separate continents, Europe and Asia. With a total land area of 17,125,191 square kilometers, the country encompasses an eighth of Earth's inhabited land. Russia's area is equal to Pluto's surface area and astonishingly larger than three continents. In this video, I'll be giving you a detailed description of the geographical problem of one of the biggest countries in the world, Russia. Watch this video to the end, as you'll be getting a first-hand and intuitive analysis of Russia from different perspectives. But before we begin, thank you for choosing to watch another one of our amazing videos. To enjoy more of these videos, subscribe to Economics Reasons and click the notification bell to get a front row seat. Now, let's begin. On a more relatable scale, Russia's size is near twice the size of the next largest country, Canada, 9.985 million square kilometers. And Russia is over 70 times larger than the United Kingdom at 242,495 square kilometers. However, this vast territory does not equate to great economic success, since the UK's GDP per capita of $42,000 is almost five times more than Russia's GDP per capita of 8748 Russia's per capita figure is on par with the Bahamas, a country of 470,000 square kilometers of area, despite being 37 times larger. This is where the problem begins. A larger territory should mean more opportunities for economic economic activities and other profitable businesses, right? But that's not the case with Russia. The immense landmass of Russia comes with a more than fair share of forests, lakes, rivers, frozen steppes, and mountains, much of which would usually serve as an avenue for economic activities such as hunting, quarrying, fishing, etc. But this is not the case. Russia is also bounded by three oceans along its coastline. Oceans and seas bear tremendous importance to both the power and economy of coastal countries. Throughout history, most influential nations bolstered their power and acquired more wealth by essential naval power and port businesses for global sea merchant trading. However, Russia's coast gives no welcome to such as the country's entire 23,000-mile coastline has no warm water receptive to docking fleets of ships. That would end up giving any great chance of either. Like every other country, Russia maintains several ports for both naval and economic purposes. The ports on Russia's north coast are located in a province known as Siberia. This province is renowned as the coldest place on Earth, making it very hostile to inhabitants and, hence, the sparsely populated area. Although Siberia hosts a significant population of 35 million, it's only about 24% of the total Russian population, in contrast to its total area of 13.1 million square kilometers, which covers about 77% of Russia's territory. See the difference? Temperatures in this area drop to alarming ranges several times during the year, which freezes rivers and lakes. Due to this, there are little to no ice-free ports, since the rivers remain frozen for most of the year. Even when the coast is unfrozen, the potential trade has the problem of Siberia, which is a desolate region unfavorable to business activities. The deplorable region lacks the necessary infrastructure to facilitate the transportation of goods from the Siberian coast into the rest of Russia. Russia's other major ports lie in St. Petersburg, the country's cultural center and second largest city, where there is yet another problem. This port links to the Baltic Sea with the city's Neva River. However, the river usually freezes for half the year, from November to around April, which cripples any sort of economic business during that period. This makes the port unreliable for naval activity, rendering Russia's coastal power inefficient. The port of St. Petersburg poses more problems than it meets the eye. In wartime, Russian ships docked at the port won't be able to leave the Baltic Sea. You may wonder why. For the Russian Navy to leave the Baltic Sea and enter the North Sea en route to the Atlantic, they need to pass through a body of water known as the Skagerrak. Denmark and Norway, both NATO countries, control the Skagerrak and can easily blockade the passage with their navies. Past St. Petersburg, another problem lies at the Black Sea port of Novorossiysk, which is home to Russia's Black Sea fleet. 
However, this port is too shallow for cargo activities. Novorossiysk's weak connection to the Russian heartland discourages prospective merchants from incurring huge operation costs on their imports in terms of transportation and logistics. Compounding the problem is the fact that Turkey remains in control of the Bosporus, the strait linking the Black Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. Due to this, Turkey holds the key to any activities in the strait. They also regulate the number of Russian ships that can pass through at any given time. All of this renders Russia even more ineffective at sea. Now, what about Russia's rivers? What roles do they play? Rivers serve as major sources of trade, nutrition, and transportation in many of the world's modern hubs and ancient civilizations. Great examples include the River Thames of London and the River Nile of Egypt. However, Russia lacks such with virtually no utilizable rivers flowing through the country. The few rivers in Russia are east of the Ural Mountains, which flow into the Arctic Ocean, where it is consequently useless for any sort of trade. The main river in Russia is the Volga which flows into the Caspian Sea. Usually, this would be a good chance for trading opportunities, but it is not the case here. The Caspian Sea is landlocked between Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, and Iran. Hence, any trade committed on the Caspian Sea must be among these countries. Such trade limits far favorable options, since most of these countries are not equipped to meet Russia's economic demands. Barring all the problems at sea, Russia can't catch a break on land either. Russia is landlocked, since its problematic long coastline leaves them with little to no sea advantage. The land, however, possesses its challenges as well. The land in Russia consists of three distinct regions, the tundra, the tegia, and the steppe. The tundra consists of the land above the Arctic Circle, including the majority of Siberia, which, as I said earlier, covers over 77% of Russia's area. But fortunately, the tundra only covers 32% of the country, 5.32 million square kilometers. In this region, the land subsoil is frozen several meters deep, which makes it impossible for any plants to grow. The Tejia region is an area that hosts much of the world's forest population. However, only forests grow here, unlike tangible crops, which would be relevant to the economy and agriculture. The land is boggy and devoid of nutrients that favor crop growth, rendering it useless for viable crop production. The steppe remains the major agricultural strip of Russia. The fertile plain stretches across Hungary to Mongolia and passes through Russia. However, Russia still stands at a disadvantage due to a couple of unique details. Firstly, the region of Russia most suitable for agriculture receives the least rainfall. Secondly, the growing window in Russia usually lasts for five to six months, in contrast to Europe's nine-month window. Thirdly, the average temperature of Russia is among the world's lowest, at negative 5.5 degrees Celsius. All of these mean that Russia's agriculture is not a favorable venture in context, and the country remains at an unfair disadvantage. While most of these geographical disadvantages have become more precarious with passing time, Russia's age-old problem remains the North European plain. Perhaps you are familiar with Napoleon Bonaparte, the great French emperor, and Adolf Hitler, the leader of Nazi Germany. These two have a couple of things in common, since they were both paramount heads of powerful nations that achieved feats of scary pedigrees. However, a common fate they shared was their failed invasion of Russia, Napoleon in 1814 and Hitler in 1941. It may be interesting to see that two powerful generals hundreds of years apart both embarked on a similar journey to Moscow. But why? Here's where the North European plain comes in. The plain is a flat stretch of land from France to the Urals in Russia which serves up an easy march for troops straight into the heart of Russia. Since it's so easy, there should be no failures, right? Although the plane is an easy funnel to stab a dagger at Russia's heart, supply lines will be stretched very thin. Russia's harsh winter makes the thin supply lines snap and leads to warfare that invaders are never prepared for. Although heavy casualties were incurred on both sides, the conditions eventually led to the failure of both Hitler and Napoleon. As seen, invading Russia itself is not a difficult task, but the logistics of supply lines are likely to falter. Napoleon's retreat and Hitler's repeat might have been a victory for the Russian people then, but the situation remains precarious. If an alliance of countries like NATO were to invade Russia, they would do the same thing those generals did, but with clearly better plans. 
Historically, several countries located in between the planes made it difficult to directly approach Russia from an efficient route. They provide a buffer zone due to their strong borders. Hitler made failed attempts to pass through Ukraine during his World War II invasion until he finally passed through the planes. However, it does not help that Russia's neighbors that once assured a safe buffer zone, including the Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, and the Baltic states now belong to the NATO alliance. Due to this, Russia finds itself at the risk of a land invasion. This risk triggered the annexation of Crimea in 2015 to keep some of the buffer zones within Russian control. Russia's geography problems have also led to increased tension in the area, with the imminent threat of being surrounded by countries of the NATO alliance. The tensions over this precarious situation have boiled over into Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine in February of 2022. That's all we have for you in today's video. Let us know in the comments section down below what you think about the geographical problems of Russia and if it's part of the remote causes of the current war with Ukraine. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to get more details, insights, and facts bordering on history, geography, politics, and economics. We'll see you in the next video.